What really is there left to say about the absolute catastrophe that is Afghanistan? I recall a speech by Biden shortly after he took office. He said, America is back and was resuming its leadership role for the rest of the free world. And it's working with its allies, blah, blah, blah general, generic, political stuff. But what we've seen has been different. They left Afghanistan without telling the allies that went to war with them. I read this article, and it said that America just isn't that interested with Britain anymore, and that America saw us more as a Trojan horse into Europe, but now we don't even provide that service. And while we are small, we still have the sixth biggest economy and the ninth most powerful military in the world. Well, actually, that could now be tenth, given how well-equipped Biden has left the Taliban. Britain might not be a power a house of military might like America. But after the September 11th attacks, Britain stood with America as an ally and joined their invasion. Britain was the second largest force in Afghanistan, after America of course, because our allies were attacked and we take that very seriously. But America is playing a very dangerous game with alienating its NATO allies. It's not just for defensive reasons, but to stop countries falling to the influence of China and Russia. And the more America loses the confidence of its allies, and the more it shows it's not willing to back up its words, the more the Chinese tighten their grip on Western nations. And speaking of China, they've just been handed Afghanistan on a silver platter. The Taliban have announced that China are their primary international partner, which is really quite ironic considering they're about a stone's throw away from Muslim concentration camps in China. And mark my words, it really won't be long before the Chinese win them over with money. And then they allow them to mine those rare earth elements that are absolutely crucial to technology. These elements are only found in certain areas. It's why they're called rare earth elements. You could find some in China, and you could find some in Afghanistan. Now, as far as I'm aware, they're the two main spots. You could find them in other places, but not nearly in the same kind of concentration. And given this, the world's tech industry will be at the mercy of the CCP. Even more so than it currently is, I guess. It's just another problem that will arise from what Biden calls an extraordinary success. Perhaps he was looking at a different country at the time. But while the leader of the free world could have been giving his allies a heads up, he went on holiday. Holiday. And as far as I'm aware, he left this up to one of his aides. And after several days, when the situation got so out of hand, he came back, gave a speech, and then buggered off back on his holiday. That's something that the world tends to notice. America's allies won't say anything about it, because it'll upset him. And as we've seen, Biden dictates America's foreign policy based on his personal grudges. But they notice all the same. Perhaps the alienation of America's allies will cease once a competent leader returns to the White House. But, frankly, the damage is done. And it's really quite chilling to know how quickly our greatest and most steadfast ally can turn based on who's in command. And I'm really not sure who's even responsible for this anymore. Is it Biden's family for allowing him to run when he's in this condition? Or is it Dr. Kevin O'Connor of the George Washington University? He did Biden's medical before he took office and described him as healthy and vigorous. I guess honesty isn't worth much when you live in the den of snakes that is career politicians. When the elderly generally deteriorate to Joe Biden's current state, we put them into care or have them looked after around the clock because they're a danger to themselves. And if you had a relative showing this level of cognitive decline, you wouldn't even trust them with matches, would you? much less the nuclear button. I imagine he has senile moments where he imagines he's back in the Cold War. I guess we'll know what happened if spontaneous nuclear war breaks out with Russia. Anyway, that's all I've got on this one. Long overdue again, I know. I do apologise for the length of time between videos. I will try and keep it short, but I'm quite busy outside of YouTube. And as always, thank you for your time.